Hi there. To what extent should a government use pollution taxes as a way of correcting the market failure caused by negative externalities? Remember that externalities are third party costs, spillover costs arising from production or consumption, and they can lead to overproduction and overconsumption of goods and services from society's point of view. And that's a market failure. So to what extent should we make the polluter pay? Should we adopt the polluter pays principle when we come across negative externalities in production and consumption. British Columbia in, in Canada uses a carbon tax. China has raised smoking taxes on consumers. I suppose you could argue that the congestion charge, there's one in New Delhi and there's one in London of course, that could be a polluter pays tax, an environmental tax. As an alternative we have the emissions trading scheme in the European Union. Uh, we'll look at that in a separate topic video but some people argue that we should replace that with a carbon tax. So let's think about the economics of this. We go back to our diagram. We go back to the idea of, of a pollution tax. Keep in mind, of course, with a negative externality, the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal private cost. The free market equilibrium output is Q1, where private costs and benefits are equated. Whereas the social equilibrium, we'd like to get to Q2, which takes into account the external costs of production in this case. So a pollution tax, well, if we assume it's a tax on the supplier, for example, a carbon tax on an airline or a farmer that pollutes uh, their fields using organophosphates, for example, then a pollution tax increases the marginal private cost to MPC2. The scale of the tax is shown by the vertical distance between these two cost curves here. Okay, In theory, that should lift the private cost of production and should cause a contraction of demand to Q2 and help to correct for the market failure. The other, the other point, of course, is that the tax is going to create some revenue. And let's put in the revenue from the pollution tax. The revenue is the tax per unit multiplied by the quantity Q2. So there we go, that's how a pollution tax in theory works. It increases the marginal private cost of the producer and encourages output to contract to Q2 where we take into account the external costs. And we have the side effect, we're creating some revenue. So what are the basic arguments for saying yes, we should be introducing more environmental polluter pays taxes? Well, the key point I think is to make is that a pollution tax, if it targets the actual externality itself, helps to internalize the externality. In other words, it turns, a, it turns a, an external cost into a private cost faced by the polluter. It also uses the price mechanism. We're using supply and demand theory here to try and change incentives and the choices that people make. And hopefully a pollution tax could, in theory, encourage less polluting forms of behavior. So, for example, uh, to, to avoid a pollution tax, such as a carbon tax, a producer might decide to invest in low carbon technologies or carbon free production. The other point, of course, is the tax raises revenue, creates income for the government, which you could then, in theory, hypothecate or earmark to use to address other market failures. So, for example, in theory, a cigarette tax could be used to spend on NHS smoking ads. Not that it is. Uh, the sugar tax, which is coming in into the UK in 2017, in theory it's going to be hypothecated and funding an increase in primary sector, primary education, sports facilities and sports courses. However, it's important to be able to evaluate. A pollution tax can have some disadvantages. First of all, the elasticity of demand for the product might be very low. So therefore, even a significant tax might not really change people's behaviour. And indeed, there might be some better, more effective alternatives available. You have to do a cost-benefit analysis to understand that. Big risk, of course, if you tax the polluter is there could be some tax evasion, some tax avoidance as people look to bypass the tax. And a tax which ultimately leads to higher prices for consumers could, in theory, hit lower-income households, lower-income families uh, more heavily. Uh, so, for example, a tax on cigarettes and other excise duties widely understood to be regressive in their impact on household income. The other aspect, of course, that if you get the tax wrong, if it's a poorly assigned or poorly valued tax, it can actually lead to government failure. And government failure is defined when an intervention, 
with the best of intentions leads to a misallocation of resources so there's actually a net welfare loss from the intervention itself relative to the free market in other words the intervention might make the market failure worse not better it's really important to think about the alternatives so pollution tax is one possibility and we'll do a separate topic video on the carbon tax tradable pollution permits are another possibility we could ban things which create negative externalities we could subsidize good alternatives for example low carbon or renewable energies we could maybe use some behavioral nudges to get people to change their behavior and we'll do a separate topic on nudging there might be the externalities and things could and the demand could fundamentally be a lack of information on behalf of consumers and possibly producers we might think about how to bridge the information gap and in industries such as motor transport and aviation and chemicals and recycling then the alternative to attacks of course is to be much tougher on regulations to try and drive changes in producer behavior so pollution taxes have their costs and their benefits it's important also as part of your evaluation always to think about some alternatives as well so the, the main problem with environmental taxes is firstly getting the, le the level right so it's very difficult to, to just find that the right tax level so that the private cost and the external cost uh, the, the social cost are equated I think the crucial point really about consumers is the impact on on consumer welfare we do have to think about the distributional consequences of of new pollution taxes particularly for low-income families and crucially at a macro level uh, if we raise our pollution taxes to a high level then there could be some competitiveness implications businesses might might uh, lose export market share there could be a shift of production and jobs to countries which don't necessarily have the same approach the same uh, uh, commitment to reducing externalities so there could be some macro consequences as well to think about lots to think about when we consider pollution taxes and negative externalities